So yeah, Glenn's been flipping his classroom for five years. When he's not teaching, when he's not flipping, and when he's not losing control of his students, he likes to go on camping trips with his family to a new national park every year. And this year he went to Yellowstone, but not for the first time. Uh, please follow Glenn Anderson at G Anderson, uh, that's with an E-N, on Twitter. And what we're going to do now is we're going to give up control to Glenn. Everybody for Glenn Anderson. Thank you. Uh, add an 07 at the end of that. Oh, yeah. G. Anderson 07. You're not the only one. <laughs> Are you the only one? It was like five, so I had to add a zero on it. I thought I'd put 007, but it was a little weird. A couple years ago, we had that uh, the um, the flu outbreak, and we had all the crazy stuff. Remember that? No, pandemic. We're all going to be die birds or something like that, um, or the pigs or whatever. <clears throat> I took that picture that he was showing, and uh, one of my kids in my class said, "You shouldn't put your hands by." <laughs> by your uh, mouth, Mr. Anderson, you're gonna die. <laughs> so, um, I've been teaching for about almost 20 years, and uh, um, so I'm glad I could get out of school. We started school on Monday, and so I have a substitute today after two days. Oh. So, we have to do a lot of learning real quick. Um, so, talk about losing control in a classroom. We had to do quite a bit of that, so it was it was hard for me to leave, but I'm glad I could be here because uh, I actually wanted to be at this conference last year, but we started our contract time, the time that we um, started last year at this conference. So um, if you have any questions, um, de chat, I'll definitely answer anything you uh, need. So. Okay, so I'm Glenn Anderson. I teach at Red Mountain Elementary School in Washington County School District. Um, we're right by a big red mountain, and so that's why we call it Red Mountain. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's see what else we got here. Uh, about six years ago, seven years ago, we went into, my school went into program uh, uh, improvement or school improvement, and my superintendent came to us and said, hey, um, can you uh, do better? Because we had a, a, a couple charter schools that were opening up and they were taking some of our students, which I don't have anything against charter schools. They just dropped us from 650 kids down to 350 kids. And so we lost quite a few students and we were in, in school improvement. And so he came and said, <clears throat> think outside the box, figure out what you can do. So we started looking at a bunch of different things, figuring out what we could do, and we started looking for different things, and the greatest thing that we found was um, flipping our classes. So we started doing a few little things here and there, and um, it's actually turned out to be pretty wonderful. So I saw this, and I thought, you know what? This is what we need in our classes. So we started doing a lot of different things. We did the videos, we did, um, moving kids around, we moved them from class to class. We did, we tried a myriad of things and we used quite a few of those things, but the flipping is the, is the one that we use the most now. Um, oh, this is my version of, uh, of Mike's video yesterday. <laughs> so. But I do teach in an elementary school, so it's very, it's, uh, you know, as a high school student, I guess, you know, and you'll run into the same things where the, the students don't get their work done or they don't watch the videos or any of that kind of stuff. And I like the question about do the parents um, get on board? And as soon as we got the parents on board, the kids started doing more in our uh, classes. And so at our first conference, our first parent conference, we sat down and explained kind of what they were going to do. And then on the first year, and the parents were very hesitant, but as we got through it, we, we did it. So, 
and the parents loved it. We do a, uh, a poll every conference, every parent conference for the, for the kids and for the parents to see what they're doing and or how they like it and they love it. We've gotten, we always get one or two parents that say there's too much homework. And so, you know, the only answer to that would be no homework um, and no work and no responsibility. But uh, most of the time we get most of them. Um, let me make sure. I saw this a little while ago and I, and I thought this was an interesting video. A common misconception seems to be running rampant among the youth at large that education happens exclusively in schools or classrooms. And our whole idea of failure or success in life is contingent upon another person assigning us letters A through F minus the E. So when we step off campus, our minds become relaxed and we do what we enjoy. But for some reason, too few of us view pleasure in education synonymously. So much like the king of years past, I too have a dream that one day my children won't be pushed to resent knowledge and learning, but instead they will strive to find what brings them joy and learn all about it. They'll seek out pleasure through education so that every day they use their knowledge doing exactly what they love. It's kind of what I, what I envision my class to be right now. I want my class, I want my students to enjoy education 24 hours a day, not just they come to school and they want to be, or they have to be taught something. I want them to be able to go home and I want them to be able to um, enjoy what they're doing and educate themselves. And I think through the flipped classroom, I think we've offered them the opportunity to do more of that. We give them a few videos to watch at home, but then we say, you know what, there's more out there. Go and find something else. And I'm working with 10 year olds. And so I, I tell them, I always preface it with, you gotta talk to your parents, you gotta make sure your parents are gonna do this, you know, make sure they're on board. If they don't have internet, then there are other things they have to do, or they can do. They do not have to be on the internet to learn something. I said, learn from a book. Go and do something that you love, learn and come back and teach us. And that video was made at SUU, just so I'd let you know. Um, my first, uh, the first year we started getting some learning with, after going into program improvement, we asked uh, um, the district to come down and teach us a few things, and they came and taught us the same exact things that they've been teaching us for the last 10 years. And so what we decided as a grade level is that we would do our own uh, professional development. We went out and we found videos. We went out and we found stuff. We'd go out and, and find the right people to come in and teach us the thing that we wanted to know. And at the time, our district was like, ah, don't do this, stick with our program. But as soon as we started doing that, we started feeling like we're actually getting a hold of this teaching thing and doing what we wanted to do. And as soon as we started doing that, we said, well, uh, why can't our kids do this also? And that's where the flipping really hit home with us, is that's what we wanted them to do. The same thing we were doing. Um, I don't know if this is one of my little pet peeves that, I, that I'm, did you know we're in the 21st century? <laughs> so whatever we're teaching, we are teaching 21st century learners. We're not preparing them. We are, they're them, we're here. This is 21st century, so we are teaching in the 21st century. And so, what is our mindset? We've been talking about teaching 21st century learners. Well, they're in our classrooms right now. So what are we doing? Are we doing it? And so, uh, let's see what else I got. Oh, and then I always go back and forth on paper, Less or less paper? And we'll, we'll see what you think of this. Emma. Huh? Emma. Emma. 
paper and I think LMSs are amazing. Um, yesterday I was, I was look, listening to uh, Jared's um, keynote and he talked about Edmodo is a great uh, LMS, um, Canvas is a great one also. We actually bought into Schoology um, and we're using that one and I like that one a lot, a little more than I did Edmodo. I used that for a year and then I went to Schoology and it's very similar to Canvas uh, but for an elementary school, it's more user-friendly to me than Canvas is. Um, but if you use Canvas, you're getting ready for all the colleges in the state. And so that's important for the older, older uh, crowd. So I don't think we'll ever go paperless because kids are going to have to use paper sooner or later. Let's see. So... This is one of the things my uh, um, professor in college would always ask. So why do we do the things we do? Why do we do the things we do as, as teachers? And, uh, and then I saw this and I thought, oh, yeah, <laughs> we got to change that. And I think flipping does that a lot. It definitely changes the thing and that's where we've got a release control but I also got another video and I and I as I started putting this keynote thing together I changed it quite a bit so there's a lot of things here and there but this is kind of a, a video I don't know if you've ever seen this one this is a video of uh, a professional development in Chicago and this is what I and this is what kind of I went through in elementary school and in high school. Oops. Professional development. Teachers. So it's real? This is, yes. This was Not real. This was, yeah, they posted this and it was like, oh, are you kidding me? Somebody's not got the vision yet. The guy who crept his cup. Yeah. Still going. And this was, imagine your professional development classes and this is what they got. Is this painful? Yes. Can you imagine what kids are like when we do the same exact thing to them? Repeat after me. Do this. Do that. And I think the opportunity we have with flipping is giving them something to do and then going deeper. And going deeper does not mean like was mentioned yesterday, doing one and a half more. Do it not adding to it, don't going more, not the breadth, breadth, but the depth in it. And so we've got to give up some of the control that we have. And control for teachers is very hard to give up. It's hard on that first day to say, okay, go ahead. I, oh, we've got to hit those rules. Got to get this. Oh, we, oh don't do the, oh, only do what I say. So hard. Oh. So hard, and it's and every year I just like whew, I gotta give up just a little bit more. And this year I uh, we we printed out a little sheet because I'm a, at a one to one school with iPads, and so we wanted to get them using the iPads at the very beginning. So I printed out a sheet of every app that we're going to use, and gave every kid an activity to do within that app, and I put it on their desk. And as they came in, they opened up their iPad, they read through the sheet, and they did all the activities. 
If they needed help, I said, ask your neighbor. Because most of the time you know one of you at those tables, there's four, I have four at a table, said one of you's got to know something. And then after you ask everybody else, then come to me and I'll tell you kind of what you got to do. Because I want them to, I want to release my control to the kids, helping the kids. <coughs> Let them do the teaching to themselves. And we got through the page in two days. We got through it yesterday. Um, they went through the Schoology. They watched a video on Schoology. They did uh, four discussions. They talked about the rules themselves. I just said, what does ready to learn look like in our school? And they had a little discussion about what it is, what it looks like. And so it was very hard for me not to say, these are the rules, but releasing that, oh, I got to take attendance and sit and watch. I got to walk around. I got to see what they were doing. They were doing it themselves. And I said, so how was your first day? And they were like, oh. Thank you for not talking all the time. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So I said, okay, thank you, you're welcome. Um, and if you can't give up control, then there's always this. All right, friends. Y'all know I pride myself on keeping it real, being really real with y'all. And I have to admit that I, from time to time in my life, have caused some drama. No one knows that better than my best friend. And this girl brought me something that has changed my life. Now, I know they say there's no such thing as a magic pill. There's not a pill that can fix anything. Y'all, they are wrong. I have discovered drama mine. <laughs> I, mean, I feel my drama coming on. I take this little pill. And my drama is contained. It's all mine. It stays right here. I don't share it anymore. I don't bring it to y'all on Facebook. And when I feel it coming on, I pop one of these babies. Y'all see that? Treat symptoms on the spot. That means no more drama. You see that? If your drama happens on a boat, a plane, or in a car, it's okay. Just make sure you have your drama mind. Keep that stuff contained. Nobody wants your drama. I don't want your drama. Your friends don't want your drama. But you know what's great? Keep it on you at all times because your people that have drama, they need to know. Let's stop spreading the drama. Now you just pop this little pill. You feel real relaxed. The drama's just gonna go. It just kind of settles down real fast. You might get a little sleepy. Take a little power nap. We all need more sleep. I mean, our nation is sleep deprived. So just keeping it real, y'all. Peace. Just keeping it real. <clears throat> so you can't release control. Yeah. Take some drama mine. <laughs> Keep the drama all yours. Uh, and so <clears throat> Lego became like the toy to have because you could build something actually there and follow the instructions. But I love this. It says children love to create things they've seen before, things they've never seen before. Whatever it is, there's great fun and a feeling of accomplishment in making it come to life. We've lost that in Lego because now we have to, my kids say, I want the Lego kit. And we go and we get the new Lord of the Rings Lego kit. They go home, they build it, and they're like, yes! Then they set it and they say, all right, we're done. Okay, let's go on to the next thing. And I think, where is the fun in just building something? That, that's a model, isn't it? We used to build the old car models and whatever models, and we'd set them up on the shelf and. And they're like, yeah, I got my Mustang. That's a pretty cool car. But we need to give the kids opportunity to create. And I think we need to go back to that. Um, and Seth Godin, one of my favorite authors, said this. And we, I think we need to be careful as teachers about this. Raising or teaching kids that need instruction, saying, this is how you do everything. Because once they get older, we say, okay, 
be creative. They're like, uh, where's the instructions? You've been telling me how to do things since kindergarten. How do I be creative? And in elementary school, that's what we're trying to do in our, in our, uh, in our school, is trying to get rid of that instruction and tell them the kids, this is what I need you to do, and trying to release the parameters so they can just do it. And so there's not really a wrong, there's just a different way of doing it. So when we say write a story, they say, how many pages? We say, I don't know, how many pages is your story? You tell me. Well, it's only two sentences. Great, read it to us. Let's see if it's got a beginning and a middle and an end. And if it doesn't, then you may have to add a little more to it. And so the size, it's, it's more the, the depth of the, of the story or the, the learning, not how much they have to write. Um, so we gotta be careful with that. So um, sometimes we just gotta let go. And this is, uh, I'm up here, I'm, I'm scared of heights. I just thought I'd let you know that. Um, I look closer than I actually am up there, but my kids are jumping off into my, uh, off the, this cliff and I'm just watching them jump. But sometimes we just gotta let go. It's really exhilarating when that happens. I don't know if, if you go back to your classroom and let them go, if you're gonna feel exhilarated you might feel a, more, a little more chaotic, but uh, kids need to be able to confront the challenges. They need to profit from the mistakes that they're making, and they need to persevere. And I think we don't let kids make mistakes. And if they do, we say that's wrong. And I don't think that's right to say that's wrong. It's just a thought, you know, and, um, Sometimes we can make things a little bit uh, crazier than it actually is. Um, sometimes we cause the problems in our classrooms more than the kids do. Um, but losing control is, uh, in the class is not giving up the control. It's putting it into the right things. The, I told you that I was, uh, I'm, a, I, uh, I'm scared of heights. Um, but this is one of my favorite rides. It's California Screaming, but that is really high for me. And so getting on a roller coaster is very difficult, but I have two young sons, well not young anymore, they're teenagers, and they always wanna go on this ride. And I hate this view right here. Ugh, that scares me to death. I always feel that I'm gonna fall off. And my son says, oh, don't worry, there's bars right there, Dad. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> but there's no windows to keep me in. And then we go down, and it's just exhilarating going on the roller coaster. There's a, uh, uh, anybody ever see Parenthood? Not the TV show, the, act, the movie. Uh, love that show. In one of that, uh, the, the grandma at the very end, she says, you know, it's just so interesting to me that a ride could make me so frightened, so scared, so sick, so excited, and so thrilled all together. Some didn't like it. They went on the merry-go-round. That just goes around. Nothing. I like the roller coaster, and you get more out of it. And he goes, yeah, whatever, she's an old lady, she doesn't know what she's talking about. He's all freaking out because of all the different things that are happening. And then as, uh, as they go to a, a play, they watch this and just watch Steve Martin. The youngest son just took over a play. And I imagine these parents, some of them are teachers. <laughs> And watch how they react.
Sometimes after we give up control, things will actually work out. And a lot of times better than the way we originally wanted it to go. Yeah, I just love that show. So, so how do we give up control in our classrooms? Do we just say, okay, kids, here you go. Here's your parameters. Okay, see you later. Um, there are things that we need to do. First thing we need to do is um, we need to stop talking. If we talk all the time, we're controllers. We're controlling everything. And so we need to start listening to what the students say. Listening helps them. They can tell us what they want. They can tell us, well, they have some great ideas. Uh, some of the things that we do in our classroom, the way I set my desks up this year, this year was so bizarre, but one of my kids last year said, you know what, wouldn't that be cool if we just set it kind of like in a circle pattern? And I said, how do we do that with four kids at each table? Because we use Kagan strategies. Anybody else use Kagan stuff? If you don't know it, you, sh you should find out about it and use it, it's amazing. Uh, it's a lot of collaboration and class building and group team building and a lot of great stuff for, for working with, with the groups. Um, and, they, and she said, well, let's try it this way. And she said, I have trapezoid tables and she said them to look like butterflies. And we set those in a circle around a, um, around a table in the middle. And then now I have a racetrack that I walk around, but I can get to every single group in my circle. And they all have their four kids that they still work. I don't know if you can imagine that or not. I tried to get a picture yesterday and I thought, ugh, but it's kind of, well, I'll show you. <laughs> so I have a table in the center and then I have And these are trapezoid tables, so you can see they don't like that. So I walk around in that center there, and I can see every kid, and I can get to every kid quickly. And I was like, dude, that is the greatest thing ever. So I'm using kids' ideas. And, and it's been fun. The kids are like, wow, this is fantastic. I'd have them in, I, 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 I hate rows, and I've never really had them in rows. I've usually had them in groups of some kind, um, but it's really relaxed my room a lot. There's no line that they have to get in the groups. There's no blocking anything they can get to anywhere. It's amazing. Kids are amazing. Um, Leadership is releasing, giving them leadership at times. Sometimes we're so frantic and, and uh, stressed um, because we're trying to control everything. We go home and we're like, oh, those freaking kids, they didn't do what I wanted. Well, we're controlling them, of course. So let my kids go. <laughs> let them go. And who's motivated by feeling things? And, um, you might have seen, this is another one for, from a kid a couple years ago. Listen to what he says about, about doing stuff in the classroom. Is he, got, he just got kicked out of the class. If you would just get up and teach them instead of handing them a freaking package, yo. There's kids in here who don't learn like that. They need to learn face to face. You just get mad because I'm pointing out the obvious. No, and you're just no, I'm not wasting your time. I'm telling you what you need to do. Yeah. You want kids to come into your class, you want them to get excited yeah, for this, you gotta come in here, you gotta make them excited. You want a kid to change and start doing better, you gotta touch his freaking heart. Can't expect a kid to change if all you do is just tell him. You gotta, you gotta take this job serious. This is the future of this nation. And when you come in here, like you did last time, and make a statement about, oh, this is my paycheck, indeed it is. But this is my country's future okay. and my education. Can you go inside, please? Scorpion. But there's a limit when I'm not bitching, but simply making an observation. Okay, okay. And now I will leave. Ooh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 
I imagine that's how I, I would feel just getting packets. Um, I worry about LMS also, learning management systems, because we turn that into a um, worksheet center. Um, instead of me handing you the worksheet, you can download it. What's the difference? I worry about that. Relationships is a big thing. It's a big thing with flipped classrooms because we're going to have to get in and meet with these kids. We're going to have to do a face-to-face -face with them. We're going to have to talk with them. And so we have to build a relationship with them. And the great thing about the flipped classroom is we have that opportunity. It's, it's amazing. We actually, they, we have them do their work and they're discovering things and we can actually be with them instead of standing up and telling them what they got to do. Um, I was watching the Planet of Apes, the new one, a couple weeks ago, and there's one part in there where Caesar, who's the leader, um, is there just like this tension between the humans and the apes, and Caesar's baby just kind of climbs down and goes up on one of the humans and just starts playing with them. And I think, I thought, holy cow, that is kids. They don't really hold any of the prejudices or the controlling or the all that kind of stuff. They just want to learn. And that's all I was doing was getting up there to try to figure out, who is this guy? I don't know who this one is. This is pretty cool. Just finding out, investigating what they're, what's going on with them. Um, so we need them to be able to create and then investigate. And giving up control gives them the opportunity. So we need to train them how to do things, because we still got to train. Kids got to train. I keep looking at the workforce, um, and what do we have them do? And, and I follow a lot of these startups, like Schoology, like Canvas, like uh, um, Apple was a startup. Um, pretty much every tech company is a startup. Twitter. And if you have a chance, go look at, on Mashable, they have a, 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 a thing that they do every once in a while that will look at a startup and where they work. And they'll take cameras and take pictures in where they're working and what they're doing. And they're letting their, um, their employees do lots of things. They let them work. They say, this is your job. They'll train them and say, this is what you got to do. Now go. I'm not going to tell you how to write code. Just do it and make our product better. And while you're doing that, oh yeah, I have a ping pong table over here. So if you get tired and you want to go play ping pong with somebody, go for it. Um, the fridge is stocked with beer. I don't, I don't uh, endorse that at all for education. but. They've got a refrigerator that's stocked with everything you can imagine. And they just have open areas where kids can, where the, well I say kids because most of them are between 18 and 25 that are in these startups. And they're walking around and they're doing different things, but they're getting their work done. Now, am I going to give that kind of openness to a 10 year old? Probably not. But I'm still looking at that and saying they have the parameters. And if they don't do it, they're going to get fired. Um, tech startups, they don't keep people for very long, it's usually a couple years if, at the most, because they're going to other companies and doing more things, whatever they need. Um, and so I try to train my kids and then trust them that they're going to do what they need to. And do I have to talk with them every once in a while? Of course, they're kids, they're going to make mistakes. But we have to train them and then trust that they're going to do what we ask them to. If we give them the responsibility, they will do what we want them to. It's the hovering that, that they don't like. I have a whole lot less um, discipline problems than I ever have over the last five years. I think I've had one kid go to the office in the last five years. Um, and there was a reason for that, because he had a 504 plan. But uh, we also need to let them fail. They need to learn how to fail. I don't think kids learn how to fail anymore um, because they're, they're so rigid on getting what's right that we need them to get things wrong. Brain studies are showing that you get 
neurons and, and your brain grows as you make mistakes and have to push through to get new things. You have to push through that. Um, Joan Bowler, anybody know Joan Bowler? She's a math specialist, or actually she's a math professor at Stanford. Um, she has a, a math class online. It was free last year for teachers on how to teach math. All new research and everything, and it's, it's a great class. I took it. Um, it's just videos. It's like a flipped classroom for, for teachers. Um, I think it's $100. They have it actually, she's writing one right now for students, so students can watch it and learn how they should. She talks about the brain, she talks about studies that they've done at Stanford, they, she talks about all kinds of things. Um, but they need to learn how to make mistakes. Um, we need to embrace mistakes. Not those kind of mistakes. But we need to embrace them. We need to um, provide opportunities for kids to make mistakes and then persevere through them. Uh, my personal opinion for what businesses need um, is, are problem solvers, not instruction, kids that can follow instructions. They need to problem solve and they need to persevere through all these things. And so they need to, if they make a mistake, they just need to learn how to, to keep going and try it again and again and again. All these little kids at all these startups, these tech startups, that's all they do all day. They're not writing new code to, to, uh, to make something bigger. Some of them are, but a lot of them are working the bugs out of what is already there. And so they're problem solving. Anytime you get a bug, anytime something goes wrong in Twitter or in Facebook, they're always saying, oh, we, there's a hole here. We got to fix it. Tons of kids are doing that. We need to teach them how to persevere. We need to teach them how to, uh, to learn from their mistakes and, and move through their mistakes. And so what I like being a student in my own, in my own classroom, this is the, you know, this is the flipped one of the questions that, that we went through. And so I had to decide what I wanted to do in my own class. And so when I decided I was gonna flip, I kind of went home and I said, you know what, maybe I'll flip my, my, uh, my parenting also. Maybe I'll make some videos on how to clean your room. And, and, and my kids said, oh, please don't do that. We don't want to clean our room no matter what you do. Um, but then I started doing, I, I turned, so for doing this for a while, because videos are great, but I've kind of, after my five years of, of, and when I started, I was doing like one video every couple weeks, and then I'd change a few things, and then, so I'm not saying like full into it um, for five years. It was a piece, a piece, a piece, a piece, a piece. We added one subject, we were doing language at the beginning. Um, I was doing just like, vocabulary and then we did spelling the next little while and so all my spelling is uh, we'll teach the lesson and have them do all their sorts and all that stuff on a video um, sorry Jared my videos are, are are 12 to 14 minutes for spelling not three to five that, that you should keep an elementary to but they, they do them. they and they love that they can go back and forth and see these things. And so when I, when I talk about being a student in my own classroom, I go and do all their work also before I make them do it. Not every night, but when I do a spelling video, I go back through and watch it. How long is it gonna take for them to do it? And I know I write faster than they do, but it gives me an idea of how it's gonna be. So if you're gonna flip and do videos, go home, and do their homework at your house. My worry is that we're gonna give them more work and more videos, and they're going to have two or three hours of videos at night and come back just tired, and they're not gonna retain that. Go ahead.
You know, that's one of the questions that we ask our parents. Have you seen any of the videos that we've watched? And we usually get about 70% of the parents have sat down and actually watched a video with their kids. Um, we use Khan Academy for math. We don't do all of our own math things. We will this year. We just, we just switched to a new program, and so we're going to do more math things because there's, there's specific things we want them to do. Um, but I've got like three or four parents who are like, I'm doing college classes. This is going to help. And so they go and they say, oh, my kid just went to college. They're going to start using Khan Academy. And so, you know, and it's not the end all be all on math. It, it definitely isn't. Um, I like Salman Khan, but, you know, sometimes he's not a great explainer. And so, especially to a 10 year old. Um, but what I like being a student in my own classroom. Um, we also, when we're doing this, when we give up our control, the kids don't feel as pressured to do things. And so, like a fish, I, I, I imagine that a, a fish chasing a worm gets really excited. I want my kids to do that also. I want to give them something that they're going to go, oh. So when we were doing some of our videos, I would actually do some of my videos. Every year, my family goes to Death Valley. I know it sounds terrible. But we go to Death Valley every year for, because my father-in-law was actually lived in Death Valley for about five or six years running a motel there. And so we go back there every year, and that's where we got started on, we got to go to a new national park every year. And so we've done that ever since uh, my kids were little. But every year we go to Death Valley, and so the first year I started doing, or the second year we started doing this, I thought, you know what, how fun would it be if I started making some of these videos in Death Valley? So we'd go, and, and we'd go to a place, and I'd say, hey, look at this. This is artist palette. Look at all the different colors of rocks. Okay, here's your next word, and we'll talk about something or other. And we'll do some vocabulary, or we'll do some, uh, some art or something. And then we started doing that, and so I've got videos from Griffith Observatory in LA. I got uh, a couple from Disneyland when we were walking around and doing a couple in Disneyland. I got a couple from Barstow. I know, Barstow? There's an, anybody from Barstow? I got trains there. Yes, it's, it's the armpit of California. <laughs> yes. Route 66, that's why we went. So we took some videos on them on Route 66. We wanted to give them a reason to be excited. And every day they come back, are you kidding me, Mr. Anderson? You went where? And they'd ask questions. And they'd know, or I would know, that they actually watched the videos. Are there going to be kids that don't watch them? Yeah. Are there kids that are not going to do their homework? Yeah. How do you get them to do their, do their homework anyway? But we'd have one or two that didn't. And the kids that didn't have the internet, we'd make DVDs for. And they would go and watch them. Um, very few. I think I've got two kids this year that don't have the internet. And so I'll give them DVDs. I'll provide them opportunity before school, after school. Anything we can do. As teachers, that's what we're, our, our job is to problem solve to get our kids to be successful, no matter what. This is kind of what I imagine kids going through through the day. And they look at, is there anything in here that, that shows you that, that Calvin has any control? This is, school is life for our kids. This is their reality. And as we teach our kids, we need to give them a little bit of control, something to latch onto, something that they can do. And I look at this and I think, and I show this to my kids, and I said, I don't want you to, I don't want this to be you. I don't, and, and so make sure you get out and do the bus. Get to the bus. Don't make your parents mad. Don't drag stuff in. Control. You control your destiny. So giving up control to the kids gives them a little more opportunity. And once they do that, they start doing these things so much easier. And it's so much easier for them to collaborate with each other, to create. Because if we're telling them exactly what they have to do, they can't be creative through that. Um, 
And losing control makes it less teacher and more student. We, we always talk about being the, the, the guide on the side or the meddler in the middle. If we can't give up control in our classrooms, we can't be the meddler in the middle or the controller in the middle. We're the controller on the side. We're not the guide. So what's the best use of my face-to-face -face time? So these are some things that we do in our classrooms that, that I will encourage you to do in anything. We do this in math. Yes, we do this in math. We, we do this in language. We do this in science. Science is the easiest one because that's who we see. We see, we see um, all the, the things from Sam's to uh, Musalam videos all over the internet about science because they're scientists. They like doing it. It's easy. But it can be done with math and language. And so we just need to do that. In science, we do, I used to do, uh, here's your stuff. I know what's going to happen in the end. And if it doesn't get to that, then you did something wrong. That was my science experiments. But now it's, here's the stuff, figure it out, see what happens with it. And then they start playing, and then something happens. They're like, oh, look at that. Then everybody else goes, oh, what did you do? How did that work? And then the learning starts happening. Um, it can be done in math also. You just kind of have to put an end to something and say, why does this happen? How does this happen? How can we get to this? Give them a problem, and then they will figure out how to solve it without an algorithm. They will figure out how it works. It's crazy. Um, curiosity. Can you imagine what the teamwork was like on this group? <laughs> NASA said, you know what? Um, does Mars have an environment able to support small life forms called microbes? Can you do something about that and figure that out? And so they went and they figured out, hey, we've got to build this thing. But did they have a Lego kit to build this? No instructions. There was the end, then they had to get to it. Independent work. Um, I've been working with some of the kids over the last couple days, and I don't like laundry lists of things they have to do. I, I'm really struggling with my LMS because it's, um, some of the teachers are doing laundry lists, and I know we're gonna have to do something like that. But that's my struggle right now is, how do I not do that in my class? So who, who owns the learning in our, uh, in our class? Is it us that controls it, or is it the kids? And we want the kids to control the learning on it. Um, the problem is, is it's got to be a cultural change. Not just within ourselves, but within education. The great thing is, is that I think personally, um, if anything's going to change in education, it's not going to be top-down. We've had a lot of top-down. It's going to be here in this room. Everything that's going to change in education is going to be from teachers doing something and pushing it up. As soon as we push it up and get our parents involved, things will change in, in everything. As soon as the, te the parents get involved and say, you know what, I love this. I love what you're doing here. Then we say, well, go tell our school board. Go tell our legislator. Go talk to somebody and tell them what we're doing, that why you like it. And they will do that. Um, I know I'm just a teacher. I'm not the center of everything. Um, but uh, we can do something. Um, yeah, I know. I'm a liar. OK. You're, you're, uh, you might be uh, thinking, well, my class looks like anarchy and chaos, but it doesn't. Uh, it, it, it does not run smoothly all the time. I'm going to tell you all these wonderful things that happen in my classroom, but I'll also tell you that it doesn't always work. Presenters will tell you, this is the greatest thing that ever happened. You know what? You're going to go back to your class, and it's all going to work perfect. You just have to do it. And you're going to walk out of the, the, um, the room going, are you kidding me? Are you serious? I 
can't do that. Make it look so easy with the pictures and the stories. And <laughs> it doesn't always work that way. Um, we were doing some stuff yesterday and I was making my kids do presentations um, on their, on, we went into our computer lab and I was having them do a Google presentation. I said, do it my way. March in. Doo -doo. And I was like, as soon as we got done, I was like, oh, that went 10 steps back from, from <laughs> releasing control, didn't it? So that was a terrible thing. But uh, a month ago, I went to a, a Schoology um, conference, and there was a lady called her name uh, Jenny McGarra from, Col or from Chicago. I was going to ask her about that video, but I didn't get a chance. Um, and she said, at the very end, she said, as teachers, you should be the ones teaching this where I am. So my question to you today is what would your keynote be if you had to teach something? And I suggest that you get up and teach something to somebody, teachers. Find out your keynote and write a presentation. Um, share what you've got with other people. And then what are you gonna do? Are you going to release a little control? Do you release it like all the time or can you just release a little piece at a time? Everything's a piece at a time. You don't have to do all or nothing. It's a piece at a time. Because this is who we, uh, this is who we're working for. But whatever you do, whenever, whenever you, um, whatever you decide to do, how much flipping you're going to do, what you're going to do with videos, are you going to use more discussion, whatever you do, Fight for your kids. It's all about them. It's not about us as teachers. Fight for your kids. Be the hero. Always look for more that you can do. Um, if we fight for them, it gives us the best chance of avoiding the worst thing that could happen, and that's giving up on someone we could have helped. And the greatest thing about the flipped classroom is we can meet with every kid if you do it, you can meet with every kid often. I'm not going to say every day, but you can meet with them all the time. So hopefully, um, who owns the learning? I'm hoping it's the kids. So thank you.